What's up everybody? I'm back again with another video. It's been a week or so, probably more than a week. I've been cleaning the garage for like a week straight. It's been crazy. Started off as a, I wanna clean up this and then I wanna clean up that. And then it just became, I'm cleaning up everything out here. It looks better than it did. There's a lot of things that haven't been organized in years that are organized and that makes me feel good. Anyway, the project at hand now today, because I have a couple hours, is to keep working on this. I think I'm gonna try filling it up and actually seeing if it works, seeing if it cools down the water to any degree. I was able to get it kind of positioned decently and I've got a little hinge on this. I don't know if I recorded this, did I? Yeah, well, I have a hinge on this now so I can access into here for whatever I'm gonna need that for in the future. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go and try to fill this thing up and you know, see if it'll cool down the water. I'm probably going to also um, put in the water pump and see if it can like cycle the water, see how that goes, and then uh, go from there. Probably need to change the water lines on the tubes. I wonder if I have any, wonder if I have any tubing. I'll have to go look for that. Um, if not, maybe I'll go to the store later. Anyway, it's like six o'clock, seven o'clock. I just got home from work. Seven o'clock. So if I need to go somewhere, I need to find out soon. Anyway, I think we should uh, put some liquid in here and see if it cools it down before I go and spend money on parts. Uh, so as you can see here, I um, have kind of built this little Nice little access point, which is nice. Um, it still can shut and kind of lock, but you can you know, pretty decently open it up and then access into here. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna lay out the kind of the water pump and everything, but what I'm probably gonna do is put probably a gallon or two full water bottles in here, just to kind of not have it, that'll prevent me from having to put so much excess water in this. This is a 12 gallon cooler. So I don't want to have to put 12 gallons of water in there. That's kind of would be annoying. So I think I'm going to put um, probably two full, you know, one gallon jugs of water into here. And then that'll kind of just take up a little bit more space. Um, and that'll kind of prevent me from having to have too much crap in there. The other thing I need to plan is where I want the inlets and outlets. I know I want the outlet to be on one side and the inlet to be on the other side of the evaporator in there. That way you get kind of water flowing kind of through it to some degree. I don't know if that's uh, what's actually gonna happen, but if, if that makes sense to me. So um, I gotta kind of figure out if I want it to be on the side or on the front or have them both in the back. I don't quite know how I want it to be. There's a couple spots that'll be really good. They'll be nice and thin so I can put my fittings through it and that should be nice and watertight. But I don't know, we'll see. Let me uh, Let me do some experimenting we'll see what happens i think really what i should do is just take the top off set it to the side and kind of work in this without the top on here and that's easier said than done but it is possible i already did it once not on camera but it is possible it's not easy but it is possible all right course of action is going to be pick it up put it on the edge y'all ever seen someone ruin a project by one stupid move well, do you wanna? Because you're about to. The good thing is that this uh, workbench that I have is rolly. Sits like that. Let's go back here and there. Now that that is cured enough. If you're wondering, this is the bucket that I used to use. Got a couple of fittings on the back. Yes, those are air fittings. Those are quick connect air fittings. They work fine for water when you're <laughs> careful. I don't want to show you the inside of this, but there's a bunch of growth inside of this bucket because, you know, I, I didn't use the soap water and I didn't use any of the proper methods of, you know, taking care of your water. It still works fine, but it's kind of disgusting. So I'm going to go empty out this water and I'm going to clean off that water pump. See if I can do anything with the hoses and uh, yeah. For at least testing purposes, I got a couple gallons of distilled water and I do also have um, a gallon of antifreeze. So hopefully that will kind of prevent any sort of corrosion and, you know, growth and stuff going on in here. I don't know. It might ruin everything, but we're going to find out. This is an experiment, remember. All right. I've done this. I've done the swap So now you can kind of see. Um, I've cleaned it out a little bit. It's not nearly as grimy as it was, but this is kind of the setup that it was using. This is the water pump. This is actually the stock water pump that came with the laser. Still running strong like three years later. The setup was to use these uh, hoses into here, and then I have these just airline, you know, regular quarter inch NPT quick connects. And then the mating hose going to the laser over there has the, you know, mating uh, hose attachments and Honestly, freaking works. I've never had it leak. Quick connects came off, no problem. You know, for, for someone who's not really treated 
if you know this bucket and this water system very well, it's freaking held up. I'm not gonna lie. And then I got one, one singular foot, two singular feet. I think there's another one somewhere in the garage I found the other day. So honestly, I can't see too much issue with kind of the parts that have been using it. Yeah, they're a little dirty. You know, this, it's got sludge on it and stuff. And that's just mainly just algae growth. This fitting right here is actually a, um, a hose fitting for sprinkler systems because the original one that it came with broke off and it was like a pressure fit thing and it would just keep popping out. So um, I found that this fitting worked fine. So got it tight in there. Have the hose connected to it. It runs up to this and this just, that's all it does is it just filters out. And then this is the inlet. I just have this going somewhere. This hose is nice and clean. This used to be clear hose. It's obviously not now. I would, I did put a little bit of bleach into it from time to time to try to prevent a little bit of growth just like a cap full of bleach into the bucket. And so some of this stuff is kind of dyed white from that, but it's not, you know, really broken up or like I said, there's been no leaks in the main hose. Haven't had any leaks in the laser, which is better than a lot of people do when they do it properly, so. All right, thinking this over, I think the best course of action for this, and this honestly is reversible, or not really reversible, but you know, I can change this up if I feel the need to. I think I'm going to have the inlet and outlet coming through the back here. For one, there's these slots in here where the out, inside and outside layer of the plastic of this cooler are really close together, which will make it easier for install for the fittings. It also gives me a little bit of kind of leniency with, you know, the, the lines generally are together anyway when they're near the laser. So having them relatively close together is a little bit easier for connection wise. I don't have to have one going over here and then one coming out this way. And then I have to have enough line to be able to meet that properly. and. Kind of just having them in the back is really nice. And if it becomes an issue, I'm gonna have them mounted up high enough to where if it becomes an issue, then I'll be able to, you know, move them around. But I think that's gonna be the best course of action. Somewhere in, somewhere in here. So here's a closer up as to these fittings. These are just, you know, regular old plastic fittings that I got from probably Lowe's or probably had them laying around. I don't even know. They've worked this entire time, to be completely honest. As you can tell, see it's a little dirty in there. It's not in all of it, it's just certain spots are dirty. This, this this line actually is fine. Like um, I, I probably have some line laying around and I probably will replace these lines at some point, but they're still working, so I'll leave them. So I got myself a uh, half inch drill bit that should be pretty much the same size, a little bit undersized for this, but then I can kind of thread this in and it'll hold itself in nicely in here and kind of seal it as best it can. I'm not trying to make this thing, well, it is waterproof right now and I'm trying to not ruin that, but you know, just a little bit of, you know, snugness in here is really not gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna put it right about there. There is a decent, uh, I don't know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch of uh, you know, distance between the inside and outside. And there is a um, there is insulation in here, whatever type of insulation it is. I don't know, probably just expandable foam. I think I can get it done with a step bit. Heck yeah, that should be perfect. Okie dokie, got my dental tools. There's some uh, old stuff in there. So we're gonna scrape her out. So it gets a little bit better of a seal. That ain't half bad. Luckily, I have an entire drawer of plumber's tape. I don't really need a lot, to be honest. So it threads on like a so. Let me get a, some pliers. I'll oh, turn that I had the one that I was using earlier. That is probably gonna be decently watertight. It's a little loose, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. It's mainly just, is it gonna leak water everywhere? And I don't want that. Oh, I didn't go big enough. That's what she said. Gotta do some more uh, fitting surgery, although this one is not nearly as bad. Now with this one, I actually don't mind if it's loose because when I tighten, because there's two threads here, I have to tighten this into here and then I have to thread this on here. Yeah, I could just thread this on and then put this on here. But as you can tell, this is not the right size hose and it's a pain in the balls. So uh, being able to just kind of twist this on and spin this in the hole at the same time is actually kind of convenient. We're gonna just uh, run with it for the time being. I don't think that'll leak. If it does, we'll tighten it up a little more. But now we got hoses installed in here, so that's cool. This one I'll probably mount somehow. Stays on this side. I don't think it really matters that much. Probably two temperature probes, maybe just one. Probably just one at the end of the day. And the power for the uh, water pump. So I'm gonna figure out where I wanna put that. 
All right, so if you've been playing along at home, we've got cooler air conditioner with the evaporator tilted down through the lid that's gonna sit in this bucket. It almost touches the bottom of this bucket and then we're gonna fill this up with water. Water will cycle from one side to the other through the laser. As it passes through, it's gonna run through the evaporator, probably better than air did on its original design and um, hopefully cool down the water to a set temperature, um, which I will control later on. Right now, I'm just gonna make sure that that actually works in a uh, reasonable time frame. I don't, I don't honestly foresee it not working, but we'll see. Once we see this proof of concept works, then I will simply just take the air conditioner controls and connect them up to a smart, to a temperature controller, which will then automatically turn on and off the uh, compressor for the air conditioner based on the temperature of the water. And then everyone's happy. All right, as you can see from this beautiful other angle, um, we have the, this is the inlet to the tank. It's gonna come from the laser. Over here, we have the outlet for the tank. It's coming through the water pump, kind of going up through here. It's gonna shoot through here and then shoot out this way into the laser, runs through the laser, comes back. Yeah, that's really all that there is to this. So I think I'm gonna probably put one jug of water in here, kind of give me a little more space and then put this thing back on there, fill her up, and we'll see what's gonna happen. <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm putting a bottle of water in here, it's because I wanna, you know, I want this to kind of take up a little bit of volume in here, so I'm not putting, having to put so much water in here. This is, you know, one extra thing. Place your bets if I end up dying. Uh, let's see, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna go for it. It's gonna slot right in right there, thinking this through. I don't foresee any issues for now. I can always take this off later, get this bottle out if I need to. Everything else should be fine, send it. Sitting up on this, slowly move, shift this over into place, slot it down, right here, shuts, water cooler. <laughs> so now everything else is pretty much good to go. Put water in here. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I'm just gonna hook it up to the laser and just see what happens. I might do that because the hose is right there. I'm gonna just let it kind of cycle through it. Just have a, like a recirc hose just going between it right here. You know, just to make it easy. I don't have any other fittings though, so I kind of have to do it that way. I mean, I can just put water in here and then just turn it on and see what it does, but where's the fun in that? I'll put a handle right here so I can just easily pick it up and grab it. Wish I had a little stand to put it on or something. That way, once it's full of water, it's not unreasonably heavy. So like a little dolly. I guess I can just leave it like this. I can take it off. It won't be that bad. I, I can have someone help me. Um, but for now, this will this will do. Let me make sure that those hoses can actually reach over here so I can do some testing. Hold one moment. It was something cool I did. I mounted my uh, quick jacks up on the wall finally. They were just sitting out on the floor underneath the Miata when I have it in here. Mounted them up, just had like a, one of those really long like equipment mounts that you screw into the wall and then made a little stand up there for the uh, rubber mounts and the uh, pump. So it's pretty cool. Also puts my creeper on top of it. I've got my regular jack there too, so. Freaking cool. My right, garage door's open now because I needed room to get around here. <laughs> All right, you're gonna get a little bit of a sneak peek. So I'll have to label these, but uh, I've got in and out. It's inlet to the tank and outlet to the tank. All right, so I'm gonna start off with putting some of these uh, distilled water bottles in here and then I'll put a little bit of that antifreeze in there and then we'll kind of see where the level sits. I'm not going to fill it up all the way um, but we're going to see what happens. They didn't have like regular distilled water but they had like this baby distilled water. I don't know. It smells like water to me. This is where I find out that the uh it's actually got a leak or something. Basically one gallon got me to the bottom of the uh, evaporator so that's cool. Final thing for right now, um, I was actually gonna put a uh, two liter, like what I normally use for ice cooling in there to give it a little more volume, but I wanna do some testing first cause that is a frozen bottle right now. So if I put it in there, it's gonna lower the temperature, which is gonna defeat the purpose of testing it. It's like a 50-50 mix. I didn't really care too much. As long as there's something in there to kind of help corrosion and stuff like that, that's all I really care about. for air and it tastes good too i'm kidding don't drink the antifreeze kids oh now 
the moment you've all been waiting for. For one, plug this into the laser and turn on the water pump. Make sure nothing leaks on the water pump. A little bit of a leak here. So it's leaking at this one fitting. I think what I'm going to do is take off the quick connect and everything and just hard wire the hose to it just for right now until I can get a new fitting because I think the quick connect is with leaking. It's okay. I'll just put the hose directly onto the uh, directly onto the nipple and it'll be fine. It's not ideal, but you know, what are you gonna do? It's the point of testing, right? But everything else looks like it's not leaking, so that's good. There's the uh, leaking fitting. Not ideal, but what are you gonna do? It's the, the price you pay when you're testing things, am I right? A couple of zip ties on the fitting. There we go, now it's not leaking. All right, there's no leaking. All right, I got a temperature gauge. This is the one that was in the laser with the previous setup, so. All right, let's plug in this air conditioner and see if it does anything. <laughs> You see that everybody? 17.5 degrees. This shit is working and it's working well. This water's cold. This is freaking awesome. It's working really well. <laughs> All righty, this thing's still dropping. Um, let's see, 17 degrees Celsius now. It's 822, I think it was 810 or so when I turned it on. I'll have to go back and see the actual video. I recorded everything. Um, it's still dropping 16.8 degrees. Um, so this is working really well. What I'll probably do is Put the fan on now. So now, or there's no uh, AC running, it's just the coolant that's in there. Um, and of course, what's, you know, kind of frozen onto the evaporator. Obviously this works. It took less than 10 minutes to get it down to 10 degrees, the temperature I wanted it to get to. Um, and that's with the amount of water that's in there, like all that kind of stuff. So this freaking worked and it worked really well. Like when I would do, like, hold on. My method for the last three years of using this laser and I don't even know, what was it? Three, four years of using the K40 laser was just using a frozen two liter water bottle. When you fill it up with water, squeeze it a little bit and then tighten the cap so it's squished because when you put this in the freezer, it expands and if you have it tight, it's gonna blow up. So that's why it's kind of crinkly and everything. Pro tip if you're doing it this method. But I've done this method for forever and it's worked fine, but putting one of these or even two of these into the bucket and letting it cool down, it would usually take 10, 15, 20 minutes to get it down to the temperature I want. And then usually it overshoots it, it gets a little too cold. It gets to a certain point, this all melts, and then it starts raising in temperature. I've had to change these out in the middle of a long hour long engraving or something like that because you know, this it's, it's ice, it melts. Doing this, obviously it works pretty well and it can get to a temperature quick enough. I think with the temperature controller just hooked up to the compressor to turn it on and off to keep it within a temperature hysteresis that it needs to be in, this is gonna work really well. Like I said, we don't know what's gonna happen when it comes to the corrosion of the whole system or anything. I'm hoping that the antifreeze does something, distilled water is gonna do something. Um, but honestly, we'll see. I don't know. That's, that's why this is an experiment. But for a freaking first test, that worked way better than I was expecting. So pretty exciting. I'll uh, keep experimenting with this and follow up with another video and see kind of how it goes. Yeah, that's uh, honestly incredible. I was not expecting it to work like that. And it was so easy and so it's freaking cool. I turned it off and it's gone up 0.1 degrees and I doubt that's actually gone up. I think it's just the water kind of, you know, becoming the temperature that it was. The water was naturally flowing cold to the temperature probe. So I think now it's kind of stabilizing, which is fine. I mean, I bet with this amount of volume of water, it probably is gonna be able to hold that temperature for quite a while anyway, without the thing even running. So this is this is better than I was expecting. I'm very excited. Hopefully uh, you guys found this entertaining and uh, hopefully you learned something. I'm certainly learning things too. So if you like this video, if, seriously subscribe, give it a like, give me a comment. Tell me what you think I did wrong. Tell me what you think I can do to try to improve this. Um, you know, I want to get back into making videos and having that support and people who are wanting to watch these videos is, is very meaningful to me and that helps me a lot. It helps me keep me motivated. And so I appreciate any of you who, you know, like and subscribe and comment or whatever. Even if you just watch the video and then leave, I appreciate the view. Um, it does, it does a lot for me. And those of you out there who have been longtime viewers of this channel, you guys are awesome. I know who you are and you guys are the best, seriously. Anyway, I think this was a good test and um, I'm gonna keep on keeping on and see what I can do with this. So anyway, until the next video, I will see y'all later.